Yeah, Munster lift their first trophy since 2011. And just by the way, Netflix came to Ireland in 2012. So that was, uh, I think it qualifies as a famine in the sporting vocabulary. But it was lovely to see a team come together in front of our eyes. I mean, a fortnight ago, we didn't see it happening. And then you have 80 minutes, Bernard, and Munster found the answers to all the questions on the day. Yeah, look, it was brilliant to see. And um, obviously, we were critical of them during the start of the season when it was very slow, but they didn't second-guess themselves. I think Roundtree and his coaching staff deserve massive credit. They had a vision of how they wanted to play, obviously how they want to create a, a connection together, and Roundtree has led that. And he's been incredibly impressive for his first head coaching gig. I know he's very experienced, but, I mean, that start he had also, then they, they had a bit of an uplift and then a dip again. I'm thinking back to, to Glasgow and Tomlin Park, a hard, night, or a hard day away at the Sharks in Europe. But since then, they've just found their mojo and they've become incredibly hard to beat. And, but you can see the fitness levels, the, the, the skill set all improving. And this is a trophy that could bring him back to the, to the top table because I think he'll get massive belief from this. Well, that's it. Until it was landed, you weren't sure. And I mean, Munster were looking for inspiration there at around 60 minutes. You were going, where is it coming from? And man, did they find it. This team just never stops playing. And previously with Munster, the issue was that they never really started playing in some of those big games. They just have such belief in the style of play and the skill level is utterly transformed from a year ago. They look like different players, a lot of them. I, I don't think you'd recognise them if you, you watched a year ago. Guys like John Klein, different level, Nash, Daly are playing a different style. You're seeing new skills emerge in, in their games and they just have such belief that they can come up with a score like that. Even in the, the end game, really fatigued after a long run on the road. Phenomenal sense of self-belief. 50 more passes, roughly speaking, we won't go stat mad, but 50 more passes per game this season compared to previous seasons. Well, we've talked about this throughout the whole season, that their shift in their attacking game has been you know, colossal, really, in terms of... We all talked the last couple of seasons, Munster, you know, dogging out in the middle of the field, winning a penalty, going to the kill zone, maul, you know picking jam over but once you kept them out of your third of the field they struggled now this year is completely different um, we've talked with Mike Prendergast all year bringing that different vision about attack mm. and Munster hanging on to the ball now making breaks from 40-50 metres out still have that capacity to kill you in the kill zone but they just bring that sort of I said dimension that we haven't seen from Munster in a few years the last try being a perfect example and we will have a that's a very different monster attack than we've seen from last year or the year before. This is what we talked about. This is the Mikey Prendergast blueprint. The players backing it, doing it under pressure in big games. And remember, first minute of the game, doing that to give an intercept. Mm. And what a lot of teams will do is go, oh, oh and this is going to work and they back off. Mm. No, they stuck to the game plan. They kept at it. They kept at it. They had three tries disallowed in the first half, mm. unbelievably. Mm. Um, One we feel was probably... A bit unfortunate, yeah, yeah. That, that, that double movement could have gone either way. But... This is a different monster attack and they're now playing a different brand of rugby and the dividends are there to see. Wait, well, this is it, but to come together for that last try again, but I mean throughout, as Eddie has said, because we, we watched at the start of the season and everyone was like, what's happening? Five out of seven losses. Uh, is this going to be another false dawn? They stuck at it and Graham Rowntree, by all accounts, behind the scenes was very calm and that was important because obviously as players you're kind of doubting, are we going the right direction here? He said, stick at it, the, the payoff will be huge. And we've seen the payoff. It's, it has been huge. The, the bravery as well is a massive part of it because, as Eddie says, the, the negative side of actually playing those passes is potentially getting picked off, losing the gain line, suddenly you're struggling, you're kicking from a, a bad position. But it puts great pace into it. I mean, Absolutely. doesn't it get the opposition guessing constantly? And it just shows that players can play different styles. Some of them have mm. probably been typecast and mm. seen as maybe limited players, but all of them have shown there's much more to their game. Yeah, I mean, if you look at like, Calvin Nash stands out as somebody who we knew was a talented player, but like he played possibly his best match of the season in the biggest match of the season, and it's always wonderful when a guy can do that. Yeah, they're back three, I think, in general. Like, Haley looks like a different player. Uh, Daly's been outstanding Nash. But I thought at the weekend, I thought they had a really good balance to how they played because they actually went back to the box kick, obviously. They picked Murray to start. He wasn't involved yeah. against Leinster. Against Leinster, they kicked it long and on and because they wanted, didn't want to give Leinster line-outs, they already recognised that they could win the aerial battle in the back three. So they had so much possession mm. from that source. And then they got into their attacking shape that Eddie showed, and there was a real nice balance to how they play. Um, mm. which Just a word on the box kick, because everyone was going, no, no, not more box kicking for years. Well, but a, like, yeah, a good box kick with a great chase. Against and a team, Manny Libbock. Yeah, and against a team who aren't comfortable under it. Yeah. They're obviously comfortable if you kick it long to them because they have the firepower to, to run it back. But Munster took them into place, didn't want to go 
and then got that position back. And from that, they, they were able to identify that space on the edge yeah, Jenny showed. Just stick with the box kick for a while because, I mean, this whole thing about the glove, it's like the escort running, whatever the terminology of the day is. I mean, that's a crucial part of just making that a contestable, isn't it? Yeah, it's players making a what could be a contested situation, uncontested. And you saw it a number of times, and we'll actually see one of the clips where Munster players were able to just win the ball without even taking off. Really good teamwork, really everyone just being on the same page. And Conor Murray's excellence in the kick. He's had a brilliant, brilliant season. And he was one of the survivors of that 2011 game. Incredible. Um, what about the arrowhead? But like he's not pretending he knows everything. No, and he's been assistant for so long, you'd imagine that he's learnt how assistants want to be treated, how they want to operate, what creates a good environment. And um, he has empowered them to, to make those decisions. George Murray, who's been an analyst for a long time, is, is you know, a big part of the kicking game strategy. So um, there's a nice mix of old school and new school. Yes. Uh, and on it's, and it's, off it's, the pitch, isn't it? Big time. And Munster seem to have got their act together. You know, um, Gerald Prendergast has gone into run the academy. Ian Costello's taken a role where he's going to look after a lot of the mm. contracting, which has been an issue for them. So mm. they, it's taken them a while and we've been critical of them until mm. now, but mm. we have to give them credit. It looks like they finally got their ducks in a row. Well, it was the whole kind of trading on past glories thing is gone now. It's a new era. It's really refreshing, but at the same time, it's good to have Munster back towards the top table. We mm. saw what their fans bring, the colour they bring. The element of history is, is really nice, but it's a new identity. And Rentree's a really good leader. He's really a modern leader, even though he's experienced. He's authentic. He gets on well with the players. He hasn't changed much. He's really popular. Just, just for my own head, new identity, because like I can, Roundtree to me is the ultimate old school monster values embodied tattoo about monster here, Leicester, yeah. you know, and all that stuff that we can channel and we can tap into as rugby, our sports supporters. But like, what is the modern? What's the 2023 bit of the identity? Is it that fitness that you're talking about? It's all of the above. It's the attack. It's cutting edge, really. It's the skill level of the forwards, married with the traditional Munster strengths, I think. And the fact that it's, a, as you say, a collective environment. It's not just a boss telling everyone what to do. Well, the things you identify there as <clears throat> identity, the Munster identity, hasn't been lost. Uh, but they've modernised how they play. And that's, that's a key thing here. This is still the old Munster. This is, and I said, <clears throat> once Munster got to the final, they'd probably win it because to them, it was so important. They knew this was a great opportunity. They were not going to let it pass them by. Mm -hmm. And the capacity and the smarts they needed on the weekend to do that was there. That's the old Munster, but they played a modern style game to do it. Okay. So they've married the two together. Yeah. And you have to say, Roundtree in his first season has got a lot of things right. For sure.